Have you ever wondered how homosexuality has been perceived throughout history? From the ancient empires of Greece to the tribal communities of the Americas, records of same-sex relationships have been found in nearly every culture. Let's journey back to the Celtic and Greek cultures. In a surprising twist, homosexual behavior was not viewed as effeminate, but as a testament to a man's masculinity. Picture a society where instead of facing prejudice, homosexuality was seen as a sign of strength, virility, and honor. Quite a different perspective from many societies today, wouldn't you say? Similarly, the concept of being two-spirited was embraced by some American Indian cultures. Those with same-sex attractions were not ostracized or shamed. Quite the contrary, they were celebrated as individuals with special gifts and were considered particularly blessed. Imagine growing up in a society where your sexual orientation was seen as a divine blessing rather than a cause for discrimination. On the other side of the world, in ancient China, homosexuality was also acknowledged and accepted. It was adoringly referred to as the cut sleeve and pleasures of the bitten peach. These euphemisms paint a picture of a society that viewed homosexuality not as a sin or a crime, but as a natural part of human sexuality, worthy of poetic metaphors. These snapshots from history challenge many of the preconceptions we might have about homosexuality. They offer a glimpse into societies where same-sex relationships were not just tolerated, but accepted, even celebrated. They remind us that the negative stigmatization of homosexuality is not a universal truth, but a social construct that has varied greatly throughout history and across cultures. As we delve deeper into this topic, let's carry with us this broader perspective that these historical records provide. They reveal a rich tapestry of acceptance and recognition of homosexuality across different cultures and times. It's a testament to the diversity of human sexuality and the many ways it has been understood and appreciated throughout history. Now, let's delve into some intriguing statistics about the global and American LGBTQ plus community. In the vast expanse of humanity, it's estimated that about 5% of the world's population identifies as homosexual. That's a staggering number when you consider the billions of people on our planet. Let's narrow our focus a bit to the United States. Here, it's estimated that about 8.8 .8 million people identify as gay or lesbian. That's close to the entire population of New York City. And within this community, about 1 million children are being raised by same-sex couples. That's a city the size of San Francisco, filled with families led by two moms or two dads. Now, let's take a closer look at the geographical distribution of these families across the United States. The state with the highest number of gay couples, that's California, with approximately 92,138 couples. On the other end of the spectrum, we have North Dakota, with just about 703 couples. But what about the concentration of these couples? The U.S. state, or rather district, with the highest concentration of gay couples, is not a state at all, but Washington, D.C., with a concentration of 1.29%. The states with the lowest concentration? That would be North and South Dakota, each with a concentration of just 0.22%. Let's head into the cities now. The three U.S. cities with the most gay couples are New York City, with 47,000 couples, followed by Los Angeles and Chicago. But when it comes to the highest concentration of the LGBTQ plus community, the major metropolitan cities leading the way are San Francisco, Seattle, and Atlanta. These numbers are more than just statistics. They represent people, families, and communities. They represent diversity and the progress we've made in understanding and accepting each other's differences. These figures provide us a glimpse into the diverse and vibrant LGBTQ plus community that we are part of. But what causes homosexuality? And why has it persisted through generations despite producing fewer offspring? These questions have puzzled scientists, sociologists, and curious minds across the globe. The truth is, despite numerous studies and research, no one has conclusively proven what causes homosexuality, heterosexuality, or bisexuality. The spectrum of human sexuality remains a complex and fascinating subject of exploration. Some theories suggest that homosexuality could be caused by a virus, 
while others propose that it may be a result of increased fertility in the female relatives of gay men. This latter theory suggests that, while gay men may have fewer offspring, their close female relatives might have more, thus ensuring the continued existence of their shared genetic material. There's also intriguing evidence pointing towards prenatal influences. Some researchers propose that increased levels of steroids in the womb may increase the chances of a girl being a lesbian. While this theory is far from proven, it does add another layer of complexity and interest to our understanding of sexual orientation. Let's also talk about another fascinating finding. Researchers have found that the length of a lesbian's index finger in relation to the ring finger is closer to the male ratio. In men, index fingers tend to be shorter compared to their ring fingers, while in women, the lengths are usually about the same. It's a subtle yet intriguing physical trait that further illustrates the intricate tapestry of human sexuality. However, it's important to remember that these findings are pieces of a much larger puzzle. They don't define or determine sexual orientation, but rather contribute to our understanding of its multifaceted nature. While the origins of homosexuality remain a mystery, it's clear that it's a natural and integral part of human diversity. The science and sociology behind homosexuality continue to unravel, painting a picture of a rich, diverse, and complex human experience. As we continue to explore and understand, let us also remember to celebrate the diversity that makes us uniquely human. In light of this information, why does acceptance matter? The answer is simple yet profound. Acceptance is more than just a moral obligation or a societal norm. It's about creating a safe and inclusive environment where everyone can thrive. In contexts where acceptance is lacking, the consequences can be severe. For instance, higher rates of teen suicides are found in politically conservative regions where acceptance of the LGBTQ plus community might be less prevalent. Similarly, substance use and homelessness are more common among gay or lesbian teens, indicating the devastating impact of societal rejection. But acceptance can also foster positive change. Take China, for example. There's speculation that the growing acceptance of homosexuality could be linked to their one-child policy and the absence of a dominant religion fueling debates against homosexuality. It's clear that acceptance and understanding are not just about promoting diversity, but they're also about saving lives and creating a healthier and happier society for everyone.